environmental education, stewardship and communities can be integrated and benefit from one another. As an example, let's consider the El Yunque National Forest in Puerto Rico. This biologically diverse area is co-managed by the US Forest Service. Its local communities depend on tourism, water supply and agroforestry, all of which exist because of natural ecosystems. At El Yunque, we'll hear from local experts and community members about their efforts in environmental education and ecosystem protection. Welcome everyone, my name is Melanie Quinones. I am a graduate student and researcher at Cornell University in the Department of Natural Resources. Here we are in my hometown in Puerto Rico where Alex and I will take you around El Yunque National Forest so you can learn more about community engagement and environmental education connections. So here in El Yunque, we have a great case study where you'll be learning about natural resources and different stakeholders that are working together for the same common good. For example, we are working with multiple sectors like the private institutions, communities, federal agencies, the academia, and nonprofit organizations, all together to advance environmental education and community engagement. At the visitor center, we'll meet with uh, staff members of the El Yunque National Forest who work with ecosystem management, planning, and education. Hello, my name is Pedro Rios. I'm a staff officer at El Yunque National Forest. The forest is part of the National Forest System. We are part of the U.S. Forest Service. The Forest Service is an agency under the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Our mission in the forest is to provide for natural resources, and care for the land and serve the people. In our case, one of the most important resources is water and wildlife habitat. The way we manage the forest is that we use the UN biosphere principles and adapt them to the land management process of the agency. In this case, and in this new plan, which was approved in 2019, the national forest becomes the core of the biosphere the surrounding areas in which the communities are located becomes a, what we call the community interface resource management area. And then the broad landscape, uh, we recognize them as geographic areas extending all the way from the mountain to the ocean. That allows to work with the communities in a more active way. In the previous plan, we were working in a forest service centric mode which means that we were just working uh, in internal things regarding the national forest land management issues. In this case, we need to consult or we consult with the communities on what as a one entity we want to do with the land. The way we manage the forest is based on five principles. One is adaptive management, your basic natural resource principle in which when you do an activity, you reflect and learn and modify. The second one is called access, tourism, and recreation. We recognize the value of information for the public when they approach the forest. The third pillar is to provide for healthy ecosystems. That's your basic shared stewardship of the land in terms of the values that the land provides, wildlife, quality of water, water checks, etc. The fourth one is a regional, the regional context. Because in this case, we recognize the value of the region, the protected areas, the rural areas, the urban areas as one entity or complex in the broad landscape. And the final one, which is probably the most important, is conservation education. We found through the planning process that people want to learn more about how to manage the land, not the traditional wildlife resources or the birds or the parrots. They want to learn about uh, land management planning, citizen science, uh, decision-making processes, so they can be part of that process with us as an agency and protect their resources. Hi, my name is Gabriela Morales. I am a land management planner here in Ajunque National Forest. And we are currently in the process of implementing our land management plan, which was approved in 2019. In 2012, the forest uh, planning rule for the U.S. Forest Service was approved, and we were one of the first ones to implement it. And it involved a very extensive participatory process um, where we consulted our plans with the communities, and they gave us feedback on what they wanted the Forest Service and the Junca National Forest to provide for them. Um, and we've maintained these relationships all throughout, not 
not just through the development of the plan, but also through the implementation and developing partnerships. That's been our main focus, um, where we've moved from being very centric to the Forest Service into collaborating with different organizations and communities. We partnered with an organization called Vitrina Solidaria, and they've been focusing on solidarity economy and capacity building in terms of small businesses and what they need to get to the next step to be in a successful uh, business. And we've also been open, especially in the outer parts of the forest, for collaborations where people can do small businesses. It can be through tourism, it could be even through some small scale agriculture or uh, with, through sustainable practices like agroforestry and uh, other practices. Another partnership that we've developed has been directly with uh, a community where we've delegated them to be in charge of one of our recreation areas. Um, they expressed interest in developing that area in terms of um, them doing environmental education inside the forest. So we've um, drafted an agreement with them where they can manage the hours of the recreation area, where they can do activities that have to do with environmental education, even some forest therapy trails. Uh, and we've opened the doors for all of those opportunities to happen, um, seeing that there is a benefit both ways in a way where El Junque doesn't have to manage all of these areas, but also um, it's a broader way to reach more people through collaborations with communities, with environmental organizations, with different businesses. And that's what we've been focusing on, and that's been a big part of our land management plan. Now, let's visit one of the local villages whose residents support agroforestry and biodiversity near the forest. We'll observe a workshop about composting and soil improvement hosted at a local farm. Para generar más gas en invernadero no tiene sentido. O sea que eso es el, nosotros queremos imitar una economía circular. Eso es lo que hace la naturaleza. Observando cómo evoluciona el Exacto. Para que el suelo haga su Ajá. trabajo. Today we're here at the community of Pasto Seco in Las Piedras. Las Piedras is located in the southern part of Puerto Rico. Uh, one of the things that we're doing as a forest service or agency is providing training to the community in hopes of decentralizing the governance of natural resources. So here, this is a great example of environmental education and also a community of learning, a community of practice. And we have it over here, and something very interesting that is happening right now is that in the same place we have academia, the federal government, a, a profit organization, and community members. So that's something very special that we're doing. Hi, my name is Jose Miguel Pacheco from TICE, and we're collaborating with the U.S. Forest Service in the El Yunque region. And we're really focused on helping communities and local farmers and showing the importance there is in recycling their food scraps and ensuring that turns into compost and using that compost to grow agroecological food. We're also learning from the community and seeing what their needs are and also listening to how we can better the environment surrounding El Yunque. So thanks to workshops like these where we're in person and we're sharing knowledge, right? And we're sharing experiences about what's important for us as a community. We really learn to know our neighbors, know resources that are in the community already present and how knowledge and opportunity can bring us all together. Good evening, my name is Maria Sierra. A big welcome and special greeting from our neighborhood and community Pasto Seco, located in the foothills of El Yunque. We are here today in a composting workshop, which is a way to bring an orientation education to our community for the conservation of the environment. The entire learning process, any process that seeks a healthy coexistence and a more stable relationship with the environment is welcome for us. While adults contribute to soil health and sustainable agroforestry, local children collect biodiversity data through citizen science, which will help communities and El Yunque staff to manage this forest. Next, we'll learn who organizes citizen science in this forest and how. Hi, my name is Christopher Nitsch. I'm a professor in the Environmental Sciences Department at the University of Puerto Rico, Rio Piedras campus in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Hi, my name is Luis Gonzalez, and I work with the Friends of El Junque Foundation. And we all collaborate with the Friends of El Junque Foundation, the nonprofit organization. Uh, we collaborate with the, forest, with the Forest Service, and we're dedicated to helping maintain the natural resources and the cultural resources of El Junque. 
And we do that through collaborations with community groups and organizations, uh, ultimately to, to steward those resources sustainably into the future. We teach the surrounding communities. They learn with us utilizing all the scientific tools so that they can use them in the forest areas. We're here in the Portal, the visitor center in El Yunque, El Yunque National Forest, and we're entering what is called the Science and Conservation Trail. We're going down to see our citizen science plot where we've been working for several, for the last three years uh, with different community members. And citizen science is a mechanism of involving communities in the collection of data um, as co-producers of that knowledge so it can be used for the process of co-management of the forest resources, this being a public forest. The research I do is within both urban and rural settings. I'm interested in how communities interact uh, with those resources uh, for their sustainable stewardship and management over the long term. The foundation, Amigos, has many different projects focused on trail rehabilitation, um, restoration of, of scenic natural areas, uh, as well as work that we do for removing invasive species, planting native trees, and other projects. And our flagship project over the past three years has been focused on a citizen science project of, of collecting vegetation data in secondary forest areas in El Junque. And what I mean by secondary forest areas are areas that in the past have been cleared, whether for agriculture or for logging or for other human purposes, and have since regrown um, to become advanced secondary forests with trees, as you can see around here. So we're here at one of our citizen science plots. This is one that we established about two years ago. Um, and the goals here are focused on conservation education and also sustainable management. And when we come here uh, with the community members who work with us, um, we have students from the university, we have volunteers of all different ages, kids, adults, retired persons. Um, they come and they join us in the field here. So we use different tools. Um, many of them are common tools that you might find uh, uh, in your home or at your school. Uh, and one of them is a simple measuring tape. And this is very useful when we're laying out a plot and we're trying to figure out the distance um, uh, between trees or the, the size of the plot. So the methodology that we've been using to measure the forest resources is based on an adapted methodology from something called iTree, uh, which is a, a suite of tools developed by the Forest Service and other partners um, that allows communities to go into urban and rural settings um, and take measurements about the trees and then convert those measurements into biomass and ultimately ecosystem services. Um, it's very user-friendly uh, uh, methodologies and software that is freely available uh, for communities and universities and other partners to use. So another interesting thing that, that is happening is that at the same time we're, we're building these local connections around ideas of resource management and sustainability, we're trying to link that scale up and link it to the global agenda uh, of, of sustainability as, uh, related to the Sustainable Development Goals and Agenda 2030. Um, and one of the mechanisms that we've been using to do that is the RCE community, which stands for Regional Center of Expertise on Education for Sustainable Development. We have RCE here in Puerto Rico, and Amigos de Junque and the Forest Service and several of the partners that we've been talking about are, are uh, part of our RCE. And so that gives us a platform to then take these ideas that we're working on here in the forest and then um, connect them to more global goals related to sustainability. In addition to citizen science, El Yunque supports many other educational tools that engage students, families, and other community members. Hi, my name is Pablo Gerandi Roman, and I am the Natural Resource Education Specialist in El Yunque National Forest. I want to show you some of the projects that we have been working with for the last couple of years, especially the ones related to the art installations in El Portal del de Yunque, which is the visitor and community center and also the exhibits, the new exhibits that we have installed in this building. And I'm walking with you to this area of the building towards the north, because from here you can see the ocean and the main concept that is connecting the art, the science in the exhibits, the communities and the work in managing natural resources in El Junque is essentially the connection from the ridge or the mountain to the coast or the reef, from ridge to reef. And in El Portal, you can see that connection in some of the art installations. We were able to have five art installations in El Portal from Puerto Rican artists. And the floor has art that represents the Caribbean area 
And when you come to the Caribbean, you look to your right and essentially you're looking at the mountain, at the Junque. We have the art of the trade winds on the floor because the stories that we are telling is all about connections. The trade winds reach the mountains in a Junque. The humidity uh, precipitates in rainfall, essentially. And Puerto Rico is one of the first places in the Caribbean that receives the hurricanes that are coming to, to this area of the world. Another connection with the Puerto Rican culture and the culture of the communities around is, for example, this exhibit that not only discusses concepts of science, like the pH of the water environments in El Junque, but also the history of the Puerto Rican flag and the construction of the exhibit itself refers to uh, a piragua, which is uh, like the snow cones that we have in Puerto Rico. And those are the typical cars that you can see around the island selling those piraguas. So one day I was at East Peak and I saw this water droplet basically hanging on this vegetation. And I thought that this is where the ocean starts, essentially. This is the peak that receives most of the humidity from the trade winds. And the water that condenses and precipitates here infiltrates to the soil and it gives rise to the tens of rivers that originate in El Junque and to about 20% of the water that we use in Puerto Rico. So another example of community connections is the art that we have in El Portal. Naimar Ramirez, the artist, created these sculptures with humanoid figures so we can identify with them in many different ways and including the vegetation. This is a sculpture that changes over time and this represents how we change our perspectives based on our knowledge and ideas on what the forest means to us. So we go to the communities. This is our new phase of work with communities. We go to the communities and we learn from them in terms of what ecological aspects, what environmental education concepts are important for them, what they know that they can teach us. And we've been collecting data on that through community meetings, through surveys, through our activities in the forest. And based on that information, we've created spaces like this that show the main concepts that the people are interested in understanding when they come to the forest. And some of the concepts that are important for us and for the communities to manage natural resources. An important element that we're also working in El Junque National Forest is how people and how communities understand their sense of place and their connection to different places. So for example, through my research, we're trying to understand how shared stewardship opportunities and activities can be implemented in areas where people have a strong connection or not, in which ways we can also create those connections and those place attachments and sense of place. And I think that this is very relevant and very important when you're doing management and when you're doing a community engagement, because at the end of the day, we are working for the same common good and understanding those strength of connection will help us to thrive and have more sustainable communities. Special thanks to Melanie, community members, staff at El Yunque National Forest, and everyone who helped us in this journey. We observed how various stakeholders collaborate through environmental education, stewardship, and community engagement. Together, they continue to learn about their local environment and improve the co-management of natural ecosystems.